signed a new deal and created the works Progress Administration in order to re-employ large numbers of the unemployed in public works projects intended to pump prime uh, the economy. And uh, I think the economist from the University of Wisconsin, not so much Keynes, uh, uh, was the chief economist of Roosevelt. Uh, that was before Keynes provided the, the mathematics no? for this. Uh, subsequently, the use of fiscal policy and public works projects would become known as Keynesianism under Keynes' theory of general equilibrium. The use of Keynesianism in civil production projects did not solve the crisis, but it did solve or ameliorate the economic, the social and economic situation where fascism did not take over the capitalist state and society. In Hitlerite Germany, uh, the use of public works to stimulate the economy glided into feverish military production for the purpose of aggression. The worst consequences of the Great Depression were fascism and World War II. In the United States, expanded and intensified civil and military production for the war effort, overcame the crisis and stagnation brought about by the Great Depression. Up to the early 1970s, Keynesianism was touted as the economic policy of state intervention that countered the Great Depression, strengthened the U.S. as a bulwark of capitalism, guided the reconstruction of the war devastated the capitalist economies under a Marshall Plan, and maintained equilibrium in capitalist economies. But the reconstruction and revival of the countries defeated in World War II would bring up once more the crisis of overproduction and recurrent bouts with recession. Despite the frantic efforts of the now united imperialist countries, united against the uh, specter of communism or socialism, no? uh, to arrange and rearrange the market in the world and global regions. The phenomenon of stagflation became starkly clear in the 1970s, when the economic policymakers deployed monetary and fiscal measures to stimulate the stagnant economy, inflation would surge. And when they applied the measures of dampen inflation, stagnation would further deepen. Dogmatic exponents of the free market based in the University of Chicago School of Economics took the lead in attacking Keynesianism and state intervention in the economy. They blamed wage inflation and social spending as the product of state interventionism and the cause of stagflation. They obscured the demand pull inflation caused by the rising levels of military production and expenditures, massive overseas deployment of US military forces, wars of aggression in Korea and Indochina, and space research and development. The exponents of neoliberal economic policy stress that the market must be given free reign and that the state must limit itself to the monetarist policy, Milton Friedman, no? of adjusting the money supply and interest rates in order to cope with fluctuations in the market. They demanded the pushing down of wages and the cutback on social spending by government and making more capital available to the capitalists for investment by reducing taxes on them and giving all opportunities to raise capital and profits through trade and investment liberalization, privatization of state assets, deregulation, and the denationalization of the economies of client states in the underdeveloped world. The neoliberal policy was also used as an offensive weapon against the vested vestiges of socialism and public ownership of the means of production and the countries already ruled by revisionist cliques. The neoliberal economic policy started to become dominant in the world capitalist system in the years of 1979 to 1981 with Thatcher and Reagan touting it and uh, using it against the working class. They claimed that the more savings 
or capital in, in the hands of the monopoly capitalist translates automatically into productive investment in the so-called free market. Right? That is sage law, no? uh, being in both. No? In the next three decades, it was made to appear that there was no economic problem that could not be solved by uh, uh, helicoptering money or pouring unlimited amounts of money and credit on it. Firstly, on the so-called supply side of the monopoly bourgeoisie, and secondly, on the demand side of the consumers. Let us look at how the neoliberal economic policy went bankrupt, inflicting great suffering on the people and devastating entire economies in both developed and underdeveloped countries. The U.S. started raising in the interest rates in 1979, practically calling in the loans from the third world and causing the so-called Latin American debt crisis of 1982. Reagan went into high speed spending for the production of high-tech weaponry in the 1980s. This could not generate any significant amount of employment, except for the engineers and uh, uh, the few workers needed uh, in this high-tech military production. The U.S. slowed down on the manufacture of consumer goods and started to import teas at an escalating rate in the hope that the suppliers of teas in Europe and East Asia at the time, East Asia would mean Southeast Asia, Japan, uh, Korea. Um, uh, they would become, these, these suppliers were expected to become buyers of big items from the U.S. In less than a decade, the U.S. would incur huge trade deficits and become the number one debtor of the world. You know? I used to make the joke that Reagan imitated the third world you know, by uh, getting into high speed uh, indebtedness and then uh, uh, buying consumer goods produced uh, outside of the U.S. Clinton tried to revive U.S. manufacturing in the 1990s by allowing the commercial production of electronic technology that used to be restricted to the military for national security reasons. You know, all the cell phones and uh, everything that you have from the 1990s were already available as early as uh, 1950s, 60s, but those were reserved for the military. <clears throat> but the U.S. corporations, especially the military industrial complex, opted to produce and export the more profitable big items. China became the big supplier of consumer goods to the U.S., and the U.S. proceeded to incur trade deficits far bigger than ever before. U.S. manufacturing further declined. The U.S. went further into the financialization uh, of its economy, together with McDonaldization, uh, uh, you know, this uh, lower level kind of uh, <laughs> service enterprises. <laughs> and at a maddening speed, after the repeal uh, this this uh, um, liberalization of finance uh, was done at a maddening speed in 1999 after the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act, which uh, was uh, a legacy from the anti-depression years uh, to control uh, financial activities. And um, uh, this, um, the financial reform done in 1999 Remove the difference between the banks and investment companies 